Hello guys, my name is Daniel Fernandez and I am the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com and today we are going to be doing a video where I'll be showing you how to prepare a nutrient solution, concentrated nutrient solution using all raw salts. In our first video, we used, in the first video that I made about nutrient solution preparation, we used a micronutrient blend but these blends are not that easy to find in most countries. So in today's video, we are going to be changing that micronutrient blend for an assortment of micronutrient salts that are going to be easy to get. For this reason, I am not going to use chelated micronutrients, but we are going to be using sulfates, which are cheap and easy to get. And we are going to be adding a chelating agent, which will be disodium EDTA, which is widely available and everybody should be able to get their hands on it, or at least most people. Uh, additionally, we are also going to be using sodium benzoate a preser as a preservative, and we're also going to be adding some dyes to give our concentrated nutrient solution some color. In terms of the formulation used, which I have here and you can find in the description below, we are going to be using a similar formulation to the one that was used in the first uh, preparation video, virtually the same except for a few small modifications. And this time we are going to be preparing a 1 to 100 concentration ratio, which is lower. And this is because uh, we want the, so some of these sulfates are hard to dissolve, so we are going to be going only to 1 to 100 so that we can ensure everything dissolves as required. So, let's get on with the preparation. Okay, so here we are starting the preparation of the solution by purging. As you know, I always purge everything three times, then dry it with a towel. So, I have two scales, as you see there. I have one for salts that, are, that we are going to weigh more, and then another scale that's more sensitive for salts that I'm going to weigh less of. So, through the entire preparation process, you will see me use different scales. Now, the first salt that I'm going to weigh here is calcium nitrate. And since this is a lot more, I'm going to use the scale that has a larger capacity. And I'm going to weigh this directly in this beaker. And I'm then going to be putting a magnetic stirrer there so that I can more easily stir it. So... <clears throat> always write the salts you're adding. So I'm adding the stir and now I'm going to add some distilled water so that we can start dissolving that while I weigh the other stuff. Next in line is gonna be potassium nitrate to complete solution A. I am using the other scale now with e, which is more sensitive which I can weigh up to one milligram. So <clears throat> After weighing this, I am then going to add this to a solution that we already have stirring, which has the calcium nitrate. And when adding from this sort of um, instrument, I'm going to be purging uh, with distilled water as well to ensure I add everything. So once I have added these two substances, I'm now waiting for them to fully dissolve before I add the dye. Now I'm adding a little bit of dye to give the solution some color. Usually you only need a small drop to have a very intense color. So don't go crazy with the dye. Now after I confirm that everything has been fully dissolved, I will then fill the volumetric flask with this solution. And of course, I am going to be using distilled water to fully wash the beaker to ensure I transfer absolutely everything. In this case, since I have a magnetic stirrer, I'm also washing the magnetic stirrer with distilled water to ensure no, no liquid remains in the stirrer. And then I fully wash the beaker with distilled water to make sure I get all the salts in the volumetric flask. Now I'm gonna take the volumetric flask to its final volume using distilled water. being very careful not to go over the line. 
now just a matter of stirring it. And now we're done with solution A and I'm gonna proceed with the preparation of solution B which is significantly more complicated. So I'm gonna start again by cleaning this beaker. And we're gonna start with the heavier solution, with the heavier salts first, with the ones that we need to weigh the most of. So I'm gonna start with the magnesium sulfate. Now again, I am going to add a magnetic stir so that I can start dissolving the salts while I weigh and add the rest. So this time I'm adding a bit more volume, so I added around 150 milliliters uh, to ensure I have enough volume to fully dissolve all the salts before I take to the final volume in the volumetric flask. So I am cleaning another beaker because we need to add another salt that uh, we need to add quite a bit of. So the next salt is going to be the potassium sulfate and I'm going to add it in a beaker because I <clears throat> need to add quite a bit of it. So after weighing inside the beaker, I will then transfer it using a spoon so that I don't need to add a lot of additional water volume. So I'm just breaking it up to ensure I can transfer it more easily. And then I'm just going to transfer it with as much as I can using the spoon. And then I am going to wash uh, the flask to ensure I, I get everything that remains inside the beaker um, with the to the, to the B solution. After this, all the other substances I'm gonna weigh in the smaller scale because we need to weigh a uh, um, much lighter amount. So next is the sodium EDTA, which is the chelating agent. So I add it first because I want the chelating agent to be fully dissolved and available before I add the heavy metals so that no heavy metal precipitation reactions can happen Mm, because the, they could happen if I added the sulfates first. So I'm adding the chelating agent first to give it enough time to dissolve before I add the heavy metal salts. Next, I am going to add the monopotassium phosphate, which basically will set the pH of the B solution because it's the most abundant acidic substance we will be adding. So I'm adding it right now so that I set the pH of the solution to something more acidic so that I will also have less chance of having trouble with the heavy metals. Now we're going to start the addition of all the transition metals and I'm going to start with the iron sulfate. The iron sulfate that I have is an anhydrous. This one is not very common, so you'll more commonly find it as the heptahydrate. If you have that, then you'll need to correct the mass to account for the difference in molar weights. So I am weighing it and then I'll be adding it to the solution. And of course, I'm purging the, I am washing <clears throat> the place where I weighed the sulfate so that I get all the sulfate into the solution. Now we continue with manganese sulfate, which is the second most abundant transition metal in the hydroponic solution. And again, transfer it using distilled water to ensure we get everything inside our B solution. Now I continue with the zinc sulfate in the exact same way. Notice that I'm writing all the salts that I'm adding and I'm writing the exact weights that I'm measuring so that I have those for reference later. Always do this. Next is the boric acid, which we do not add that much of, so I wait here a note earlier.
but the order of the Boricas it does not matter that much, you can add it earlier if you wish. Now finally the copper sulfate, this we need to add very little of copper sulfate so I'm adding, I'm having trouble weighing this, this is why these cheap scales are so cheap compared to good lab scales because they are not very sensitive so I'm struggling to weigh 5 milligrams here because this basically my scale is, has a very low sensitivity so I'm not able to easily weigh 5 milligrams although I should the scale is just not good enough so you can see me struggling with it so I finally added something that was probably between 5 and 10 milligrams but pretty low uh, accuracy in that addition so I am also not adding sodium molybdate I'm going straight to the sodium benzoate because I didn't have sodium molybdate so it's missing from the preparation you would add it now if you have it the reason why I didn't add it it's because just I didn't have it for the video but it should be added so I'm weighing the 50 milligrams of the benzoate which will act as a preservative so that the solution doesn't spoil because these solutions can spoil quite easily if you store them for a significant amount of time and the benzoate will prevent this from happening. Now I'm waiting for everything to dissolve although it will never look completely translucent because some salts particularly the potassium sulfate has a significant amount of insoluble impurities so it will never look crystal clear. I'm also purging um, bottle where I will be storing the A solution because I only have one volumetric flask and now I've stored the A solution and now with the volumetric flask empty I can proceed to uh, take the B solution to volume so you need to purge it very well if you only use one flask because remember that the A and B solutions are chemically incompatible this is why I'm purging this volumetric flask way more than three times because if any impurities remain then it would precipitate so the B solution is now as good as it's gonna get it, as I was mentioning it has some impurities because of the potassium sulfate that will never dissolve but it's a small amount and you can solve that problem by getting higher quality grade potassium sulfate but sadly in most places we don't have that available and now basically I am going to add the dye to give it some color and after doing this I will then proceed to take it to volume using the volumetric flask so I'm now transferring and as always I will use distilled water to wash it over of course wash the stir get all that solution be out of the stir and then wash the beaker and take it to the a volumetric flask and I'm gonna take this volumetric flask to volume using my and uh, distilled water okay now I'm mixing it to ensure it's well 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 mixed and now I need to purge the other bottle with the B solution you can see on the neck that the B solution is quite translucent also, although as I've mentioned not as clear as we would uh, want it to be and now I have their A and B solutions. Okay, as you saw, we prepared two solutions, an A solution with calcium nitrate and potassium nitrate, and a B solution that contains all the other nutrients, except sodium molybdate, because I didn't have it, as I told you, in the preparation step. The solutions are prepared from all raw salts, no premixed nutrients or blends, using very low cost, highly available uh, salts like heavy metal sulfates, well, transition metal sulfates. I hope you liked this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and make sure you check future videos out as we will be preparing many other solutions with different changes in the composition of the preparations. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video and bye-bye.